Today we're going to be talking about the Emotiva RMC1L 16 channel home theater processor. I did buy it with my own money, but I've since returned it. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about why I think it's the karate kid of home theater processors. I'm Barrett. This is Spec of Tech. Welcome to the channel. All right, guys, real quick before we get into the RMC1L, uh, if you guys are into subwoofer reviews, make sure that you subscribe and tick the bell icon. I do have a couple subwoofer reviews coming out for Arendal. I have their 2V, which is a dual driver unit uh, ported, and then I have their dual driver unit sealed uh, off to the right here. You can't see it on the camera, but I'm really looking forward to getting those unboxed and reviewed. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure that you subscribe. At the time of this recording, the Emotiva RMC1L is actually currently unavailable, but it is priced at 3199 US dollars or 4759 Canadian dollars. Now, when it comes to the specs, of course, you can just look that up on the Emotiva website. I'll drop links down in the description below if you do want detailed specs. But on the back of the unit, you aren't going to get any unbalanced RCA connections. You're going to only get the 16 channels in a balanced XLR connection uh, configuration. The HDMIs are not HDMI 2.1, they're HDMI 2.0, so you're not going to be able to get 4K 120Hz or 8K 60 hertz with this unit. It is going to be able to play back anything Dolby Atmos or DTS-X, but when it comes to extra features, uh, that's where the Emotiva kind of lacks to help save on the cost because it is one of the cheaper units that is a 16 channel. So you're not going to get things like Bluetooth or Chromecast with this unit. So if you are looking for a unit that has all the bells and whistles like HDMI 2.1, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, for things like uh, Tidal Connect or AirPlay, you're probably going to want to steer clear of the Emotiva unless you're willing to buy separate units and connect it to this one to have those capabilities like uh, wireless streaming music. So to put it simply, uh, when it comes to specs, you are dealing with something that's pretty simplified. Uh, when it comes to the Emotiva, you're not going to get a fancy web UI. You're not going to get a fancy on-screen display. The on-screen display is pretty simple. It's pretty basic. It does the job. It does function. Uh, but if you're expecting something that's going to operate very quickly and very smoothly, uh, that's not really what you're going to get with the Emotiva. Like I said, it does function, it does work, but it's not the best in the business by no means. So if you are looking for a unit with a clean, polished uh, OSD or a web UI, you're probably going to want to steer clear of the Emotiva again. But that's not to say that the Emotiva doesn't have anything to offer. It does have fantastic sound, which is what a processor is all about. So we're going to get to that in just a second. Before we move on, we're going to quickly cover the build quality and aesthetics of the Emotiva RMC1L, but it's going to be a pretty quick section because what is there really to talk about when it comes to the build quality of a sound processor? It does seem to be a, a well-built unit. Uh, the blue OLED screen does look very nice. It may be slightly dated, I guess, when you're comparing it to some of the other more modern units, something with a color screen like uh, an Arkham or an Anthem unit. But that's not to say that it doesn't look nice. It does have a nice look. When it comes to the build quality, it is pretty much a standard processor. You got metal all the way around with some feet on the bottom. But when it comes to topics like the build quality, the specs, the aesthetics, and the on-screen display, there have been others that have covered that already. Uh, it doesn't really benefit you guys for me to cover that again because, I mean, that's kind of finite. The on-screen display is the on-screen display. The build quality is the build quality. That's not going to change. But what does change is the personal experience, and that's really what I want to cover in today's video. If you guys watch my channel, you do know that I try to be as honest as possible, so that's exactly what we're going to do today. If you're thinking all I'm going to do is rag on the RMC1L, you're absolutely wrong. There is definitely some strong suits to this unit, and that's what we're going to talk about, and that's why I kind of liken this unit to the Karate Kid. I'll explain that a little bit later but first I want to talk about my personal experience with the unit itself. Uh, the first unit that I got uh, did have a manufacturer defect so uh, Emotiva was excellent with the customer service. They sent me a new unit. Um, I did cover this in my first video regarding this unit. The second unit that I got was absolutely fine. There was no issues with that one or manufacturer defects. But I got it in my rack and I got it set up. I used the on-screen display to set everything up. So all you're doing is you're setting up your levels, your distances and that sort of thing, which is quite simple in the on-screen display to do. I do like to hear what a processor sounds like before calibration. So the first thing I do when I hook up a new processor is just set my levels and set my distances and that sort of thing, set all the base in the processor so I can hear what the unit sounds like before it calibrates to my room. And after I got that all set up, I was very impressed with the sound, which we are going to get to in a little bit. But to put it simply, this sound is impressive on this unit. There are some things that aren't so impressive though. So the first thing that I notice is that the on-screen display is a little bit slow. So every time you click down or you click up, it has to refresh all of the text. It doesn't just kind of move down. It's like the whole text refreshes and then it moves down one or moves up one based on what you're doing. So I don't know why they have it that way. It's clearly how they've programmed it, but I do find that that does waste a lot of time because it's refreshing all of the text just to go up or down one click. 
but that's more of just a minor annoyance. It's definitely not a make or break type flaw. So another thing that I'm not too fond of is that you do have to connect different devices to this unit so that you can run room calibration. So there's a network switch that you have to connect to a Raspberry Pi and you have to connect all that to your router. So it's just a lot more extra cables and extra devices that I don't think should be needed that should just be built into the device one of the other issues i was dealing with is slow hdmi handshakes or just kind of buggy hdmi handshakes and that's something that i was aware of before i got this unit and it was something that i was going to be willing to look past if everything else on the unit impressed me uh, but that is something that you're going to experience just so you know i have heard that emotiva has hired one of the best hdmi programmers out there to help them with this uh, I, d I can't confirm that but i have heard that that is the case i hope that is true because they do have a pretty fantastic sounding unit they just have to work out some of these bugs that I'm going to talk about with you. One of the other things that I experienced is what I would call more of a major bug is there was a time where the remote just wouldn't really register. It would take about 30 seconds, maybe even upwards of a minute for one button press to register on the unit. So clearly something was happening with the processing. Uh, it was just very, very laggy at that point. So what you have to do is turn it off, unplug the unit, uh, wait a little while, plug it back in, and then turn it back on. And that does solve the problem. But there are other times where I had... Uh, more major bugs where I did have to unplug the unit and plug it back in. Uh, like, for instance, where I wasn't getting sound from certain speakers. Again, you turn it off, turn it on. So I guess to, to put it simply, you are going to deal with some bugs with this unit. Don't cross it off your list because there are some bugs. There are some people out there that are willing to deal with some bugs as long as they're going to get a great sounding unit at a great price. And we're going to get to that. The next bugs that I'm going to talk about, I did cover in my last video as well. But I just want to kind of uh, make this a complete video to give you guys all the details to... Uh, so that you guys understand why I came to the conclusions that I came to. But I had a friend named Joe come down with a Macintosh amplifier that we wanted to compare to my Tone Winner 81 uh, PA amplifier just to see if we could hear the differences between those two massively <laughs> beastly amplifiers. So we hooked it up to the Emotiva. And what ended up happening is we started to hear the um, sound drift to the left when I switched from preset 1 to preset 2 and back to preset 1 on the Emotiva. Uh, because one of them had... Dirac enabled and the other one did not have Dirac enabled so we wanted to hear the differences between both. So the center image drift to the left and there wasn't really much I could do to fix it like I did add some trim and it just didn't seem to fix it like it should. Uh, like I've had units before where the center image is off to one side a little bit and all I do is change the trim to, to compensate for that or even sometimes change the toe in which we did check the toe in on the speakers as well and they were towed in exactly the same so that was not the issue. But uh, it is something that uh, I guess Emotiva is aware of and I did contact them about it and I did send them uh, my log files and whatnot to help them try and fix this in the future but that was another bug that I experienced the other problem that would happen when I switched from preset 1 to preset 2 and back is it would actually change the entire volume of the unit so let's say you're listening to preset 1 and you're listening at just for instance 75 dB so you're it's a 75 dB you switch to preset 2 because it's a rack sometimes it, it does make some changes to the volume uh, so you're listening at a different volume. It doesn't matter what that is. But then you switch back to preset 1, so it should still be at 75 dB. But we were getting a, a significant drop in volume. I would say below 70, 60-something dB. It dropped at least 6 dB, I would say. Again, you turn the unit off, unplug it, plug it back in. It remedied the issue until you would switch from preset 1 to preset 2 and back to preset 1. And then you were right back to where you started. So if you are somebody like me that's going to do a lot of comparisons like that, where you're going to compare different speakers, different amplifiers, switch between preset 1, preset 2, uh, it just doesn't seem that the Emotiva is a fan of that. Uh, I hope that they do fix that in the future, and, and I'm sure that they are working on it. Like I said, I did send my log files for them to, to help identify the problem. But that's what I was experiencing, and it is possibly something that you could experience if you do pick up one of these units. But if you're not a tinkerer and you're not switching back and forth, you're just going to set it up and you're going to watch movies with it and then you're going to listen to music with it and you're not going to switch around and change a whole bunch of things. It's probably going to operate a lot better for you. So I don't want you to take my experience as something that everybody's going to experience because I'm a bit of a unique uh, use case simply because I am uh, you know, doing the YouTube channel and doing a lot of comparisons. So my sample, uh, I guess, is not uh, the typical consumer. So keep that in mind when I'm when I'm listing off some of these bugs. And again, I don't want you to write this thing off and just, just go away from this uh, video simply because what I've listed off here, there is definitely some benefits to this unit. And that's what we're going to get into right now. So I've talked about a lot of the bad or the negative up until this point. But let's talk about uh, what is good about this unit. And it's actually kind of the most important aspect that is 
really good on this unit and that's the sound when you think about the price then you think about the sound you don't expect the sound to be this good from a unit that costs this much when i first heard the sound of this unit i was absolutely blown away i did liken it to the anthem avm 90 which is significantly more expensive than the emotiva it does have a lot more of the bells and whistles and it does operate a lot more smoothly but when it comes to the sound quality i would definitely say that the emotiva rmc1 L is close to the Anthem AVM90, if not pretty much on par. Now, keep in mind that I was basing that off of memory because I had the AVM90 before the Emotiva, so I didn't have an opportunity to direct AB them, but I would say that they're definitely close when it comes to uh, things like clarity and channel separation and that sort of thing. They're um, signature sound I would say is slightly different the Emotiva I would say leans a little bit more on the leaner bass side the Anthem AVM90 does seem to have a little bit more bass in its stock presentation anyway of course that can be calibrated either way if you want more if you want less but the stock sound I would say the uh, AVM90 does have a little bit more bass to it than the Emotiva. So for instance, when I was watching the bar fight scene in John Wick, uh, you know, where he's going through the kind of that underground pool area and everybody's getting shot up. Um, it's one of my favorite scenes to demo new uh, processors or new home theater equipment in general, just because it is pretty dynamic. You got a lot of uh, kind of background noise and then you have that dynamic uh, firing of the of the pistols down in the pool area which has a lot of echo so I just like that as a sound demo and when I use that on the Emotiva I was absolutely blown away uh, especially when he pulls out the, the, the larger pistol and then he starts shooting the glass while the guy's running by it was just incredibly dynamic but at the same time crystal clear and just really punchy um, just definitely better than some of the less expensive units or the units at the price of the Emotiva uh, that I've experienced before, uh, I guess when comparing it to say something like the Marantz AV7706 or even the Anthem AVM70, which is relatively close in price to the Emotiva RMC1L. It just does sound better than, than those units. Now, again, there's other things that those units do much better than the Emotiva, but when it comes to sound, the Emotiva wins hands down. When it comes to music, the Emotiva performs very well as well. Uh, when comparing it to something like the AVM90, that's the AVM90 is my favorite uh, processor when it comes to music specifically. It just does music very well. It's very smooth, very well-rounded. Uh, I guess refined is a very good way to put the AVM90 when it comes to music. The Emotiva may be slightly less refined. It's a little bit sharper on the edges, a little bit more analytical, uh, which some people may actually prefer versus a little bit more uh, well-rounded refined sound like the AVM90 but the dynamics on the Emotiva for music are fantastic uh, the, the clarity and the channel separation the soundstage again fantastic on the Emotiva they've just done a really good job of giving you basically the best sound probably that you can get for the price range uh, in the Emotiva RMC1L. I cannot take that away from them. They've absolutely accomplished that. So if you guys are looking for the absolute best sound that you can get for that price range and you're willing to look past some bugs and you're not going to be switching back and forth and kind of irritating the Emotiva, so to speak, you're just going to kind of set it and forget it. Uh, definitely keep your eyes on the Emotiva. Now, up until this point, we've been talking about the stock sound, but of course this unit does come with Dirac. So when you do incorporate Dirac and you calibrate it to your room, it just takes that sound up uh, even one more notch. So again, absolutely fantastic sounding unit with Dirac, even better. Uh, but do keep in mind that you're not able to use Dirac Live bass control with this unit. I do hope that they incorporate that in their future units, which I've heard they're working on right now. They're going to incorporate HDMI 2.1 and hopefully uh, Dirac Live bass control. But you're not going to get that with the RMC1L. But that doesn't change the fact that it already does sound fantastic and it does do a great job of calibrating your room. Uh, Dirac is one of the better calibration softwares out there. So great for them to incorporate that into their system. Like I said, you do have to use uh, a couple of extra devices and hook it up to the unit so that you can run Dirac but there are directions out there for you to get that done uh, it's not an incredibly hard process but just a little bit inconvenient that it's not all just built into the unit okay so now we know that the the unit sounds absolutely fantastic guys and I don't want to undervalue that at all of course that is one of the most important things of a sound processor especially home theater processor uh, for the sound to be fantastic Emotiva, absolutely well done when it comes to the sound quality of this unit. Again, if you're willing to look past some bugs, guys, definitely look at this unit. But I did end up returning mine. Why did I end up returning mine? Well, because I am uh, a YouTube reviewer. I do comparisons on speakers, amplifiers, streamers, and you know all sorts of different sound equipment. I needed uh, a processor that was going to be reliable. I needed a processor that I didn't kind of have to mess around with every time I had a bit of a bug. 
because it really does set me back when I'm trying to get videos done and the processor's not cooperating with me. So that is pretty much the main reason that I returned that unit. Um, if I was in a different situation, let's say I wasn't a YouTuber, I could I could see myself uh, sticking with the Emotiva simply because the sound was so good. I don't know for how long though. I think eventually the bugs would kind of get to me and be like, okay, you know what? As good as this unit sounds, I do want to move on to something else. But maybe by then Emotiva would have units that they fix some of those bugs and, and you know, bump things up to HDMI 2.1 and, you know, fix some of those issues. Who knows? But at this current point, I just, I couldn't keep that unit. It just wasn't working for me and my situation specifically because I am a reviewer. So that is why I returned my unit. Uh, what I am going to next or what I have in my unit now, uh, we're going to talk about that in just a second. But first I want to explain why I think that this unit is sort of the karate kid of the sound processor world. Uh, the reason I say that is because in the movie Karate Kid, of course, his one leg is hurt. So he, he limps into the ring and, you know, you, you think that he's basically done. He's, he, there's no way that he can, he can come back and, and win the tournament. So he does his, you know, little crane kick with his one weak leg and his one strong leg. So I guess my point being is that, yes, there are some some weak uh, flaws to the RMC-1L uh, with, you know, having some bugs and having that image shift uh, and that sort of thing and the HDMI handshake issues. So, yes, it does have one weak leg <laughs> that's been damaged and he can't put much weight on it. Uh, it, it does function. You can, you can limp your way in, uh, but then it's got that one strong leg, which is the sound quality which, you know, to liken it to the Karate Kid, he does end up winning the fight by kicking them in the face with his strong leg. And that's kind of what the Emotiva does, um, <laughs> so to speak, because it, it is a little bit weak with those other things, like I mentioned, but then the sound just kicks you in the face and you're like, whoa, okay, that's clearly where they put their focus on this unit is in the sound quality. Um, and maybe they can't, invest more into the other things until they've established themselves as a bigger company. I don't know. I really don't know the uh, economics behind why they're doing what they're doing, but they definitely have fantastic sound quality. I just wish that they would fix the rest of it, but that's not to say that the Emotiva can't come and kick you in the face and win the fight. If you are looking for fantastic sound quality and you don't mind some bugs, that's the Emotiva. That's the Karate Kid. All right. So I know full well, I'm going to get this question down in the comments below. So I might as well cover it in this video. And that is what am I going to move to next? Uh, well, first of all, I just want to explain what prompted this change. Uh, I wanted to try Dirac. And while I was trying Dirac with the Emotiva, I decided that I'm, I'm kind of done trying to change out my system. So I decided I'm going to build uh, a reference system for myself and I'm, st I'm obviously still going to do reviews and still going to compare things. But for my personal system, I'm trying to build myself a res reference system, something that I can stick with for a longer period of time. So that was kind of part of the the reason that I was, you know, wanted to get rid of the Emotiva because I knew that I, that wasn't going to be my reference uh, unit simply because of the bugs. So then I moved on to the a uh, Arkham AV41 because, again, I did want to try Dirac and I wanted to have a more... Uh, I detailed experience with Dirac. So I tried the Arkham AV41, which does have Dirac, and it also has uh, Dirac Live Bass Control. But again, uh, I started to have some bugs with it. Uh, not as bad as the Emotiva, but there were some bugs where I had to turn the unit off, unplug it, plug it back in, turn it on, just to get things going again. Uh, and I did have some bugs with uh, Dirac and the unit itself not wanting to cooperate with each other all the time. So again, if it's for somebody that doesn't tweak they're just going to set it and forget it both of these units could probably work for them no problem but for me because i'm constantly changing things it just doesn't work and i didn't want that to be my reference uh, processor as well because i just need something that's going to be reliable and also sounds great so i thought to myself i'm not having very good luck with dirac units uh, as much as i would like to have a dirac unit and, and experience it in its full glory for a longer period of time i decided to just go with what I knew, what I knew was reliable and I knew sounded fantastic. It's one of my favorite processors. And that is the Anthem AVM90. I'm going to cover this um, in more detail in a future video uh, because I do want to kind of highlight the reference system that I'm building. So I do want to say a quick thank you to Base Electronics for hooking me up with another Anthem AVM90. I had sold my last one with the intentions of, uh, you know, trying out uh, several different processors, but 
you know, things change and I kind of came back around to the Anthem AVM90. Yes, I did buy it with my own money, but I do like to thank awesome dealers like Blaze Electronics when they help me out. Uh, so thank you guys. I think I am going to cover my reference system in a future video, uh, at least all of the components that I chose to build my reference system for me. I'm going to cover that in a future video. It's probably going to be some time because I'm going to wait till I have all of the units in place before I make that video. So make sure that you guys subscribe, tick the bell icon if you do, if you want to see that video. I'm really curious to hear your guys' opinion on the Emotiva products as well. If you want to see more of their products, if you've owned their products, what you think of their products, just drop your comments down below. I'm really curious to see what you guys have to say. And remember to enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.